Well, hello there, listener. It looks to me like I spotted myself a fellow collector. Now, I know I like to collect things like posters and T-shirts and action figures of all my favorite video games and TV shows. And Loot Crate makes that possible. And if you're a fan of this show, I know you love all things Fallout. And Loot Crate has a very specific Fallout-type crate. And if you want to take 15% off of your order, head on over to the link in the show notes below and enter Robots Radio at checkout. That's LootCrate.com. Robots Radio presents... The Omega Broadcast, a Fallout story. There's nothing quite like the month of Spooktober. And although it's a great time for pumpkins and candy and costumes and mischief, the thing that gets me the most excited for this season are the variety of spooky and hair-raising stories. Like the days when you were a child in a dark room with only a flashlight to stir the mood, sitting in circles, trying our best to frighten our friends with the scariest of stories making October a month to remember. And with Halloween just around the corner, we decided that there was no better time to release our first new type of mini that we've titled Journal Entries. You see, we've listened as the show begins with Brian Burton out of the vault for a little more than two years. But we really don't know what he was up to when he had first emerged from Vault 76. And these journal entries will take us back to when his adventure first began. So whenever you're ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy this special Halloween journal entry. Brian Burton, journal entry number seven. October 30th, 2102. I've been out of Vault 76, out here on my own for close to seven days. Tomorrow is Halloween. I'm sitting here around my campfire, just sipping on these last few drops of this Nuka cherry. Trying to remember what Halloween was like before the bombs. I don't really remember much of that life there are some memories that I'm sure will stick with me until the day that I die. I just want to say that I'm not a fan of this new Appalachia. Everywhere I go, it's so empty. Every new day, I just, I feel so, well, so alone. Anyways, like I said, it's Halloween tomorrow and 
I can't think of a more fitting thing to do than record a journal entry. And not just any journal entry. A scary journal entry. Kind of like a campfire story. So, if somehow you found this and you're listening to it, you might not think it's that scary, but it sure scared the hell out of me. See, I'd been out of the vault for every bit of 48 hours, and I really wasn't sure where to start. Other than an instructional holotape left to me from the overseer, my path seemed like my own to choose. So I decided, you know what? First things first. Let's go back to my old house in Point Pleasant. So I did just that. And tried to make my way over there. You know, I figured I'd hit up the old house first. And then if I had time, maybe I'd check out my dad's old store in town. But... I didn't accomplish any of that. I made it to just outside the city limits when I could hear gunshots in the distance. And these gunshots didn't instill any sort of fear in me at all. As a matter of fact, I actually came a bit excited. To me, the gunshots didn't mean danger. To me, they meant that there were people over there. So with a bit of excitement, I made my way closer to the town and when the sun began to set, I could see silhouettes of what looked like people on the rooftops. As I made it to the bridge that crossed right into town, I heard this bone chilling shriek and I stopped immediately in my tracks. What was that sound? I had never heard anything like that in my life. As I stood there frozen with fear, the evening began to grow darker and colder. The dusk quickly transformed into a dark and quiet nighttime. And the darker it got, the quicker the silhouettes of the people on the rooftops just disappeared. Then I began to notice that the sound of the gunfire eventually stopped. My curiosity quickly began to overtake the fear that I was feeling and that partial paralysis in my legs began to fade and I began to move slowly towards the now darkness covered town. One thing you gotta understand is I haven't been outside a vault since I was 10 years old so I have absolutely no clue what horrors are out here in this new Appalachia. So I clicked the flashlight on my vault tech issued pit boy slowly made my way forward. As I began to get closer to the main street in town, I saw a bunch of dead bodies on the ground. But these people looked almost diseased, scorched even. My heart sank when I realized that these creatures weren't human. Well, It might have been at one point, but not anymore. By the look of them, they didn't seem like they'd be too friendly. Luckily, I haven't run into any more of them so far while I'm out here. I then begin to hear this faint scratch in the distance. The sound was a lot like tiny little pecks across a solid wooden surface these scratches began to get louder and louder. And the louder they got, the more I realized that there were footsteps. And whatever was walking had more than just two feet. So my pace quickened as I hurried along the main street. Main Street in Point and Pleasant runs parallel to the Ohio River. And at night, the river looks like a silky blanket shimmering in the moonlight. Most nights, this view would be considered beautiful, but on that night, it just added to the ambiance of terror that I was beginning to feel. The quicker I began to move forward, the louder and closer those footsteps grew. 
Then in what felt like a snap of a finger, the footsteps just stopped. So I decided to pause for a moment and gather myself. And as I stood there with my head on a swivel, I began to feel overwhelmingly tired. My body began to tremble with uncontrollable shakes and a fevered cold sweat began to pour from my brow. My mind was racing. What was wrong with me? How could I go from feeling perfectly fine in one moment to what felt like sitting on the edge of death? Then out of nowhere, that bone chilling shriek echoed right above me once again. And in an instant, my tiredness and weakness disappeared. I soon felt a rush of a second wind. I turned quickly behind me to see on the ground at my feet the largest tick that I had ever seen in my entire life, and it was dead. And in a quick snap reaction, I jumped backwards and felt my feet step into a moist and yet sticky puddle. And the sudden aroma of a metal and copper began to fill the air. I kneeled down to get a closer look at what I was standing in, and as the greenish glow from my pit boy cast across the ground, I realized that it was blood. And it's not just any blood. It was my own blood. The dizzy and tired feeling that I had felt earlier was because that tick had attached itself to my leg and was beginning to drain the blood from my body. My mind again began to race in fear and wonder as to if there were any more of these giant ticks around me. And what killed this particular one? Did it drain so much of my blood that it just burst? While pondering in silence, I began to hear more of those tiny scratches in the distance. This time, it was more than just one. There were multiple legs moving and scurrying in the darkness. I quickly stood to my feet and began to inch my way backwards, slowly, step by step with my eyes focused in the direction of the noise. It was in this moment when I took a step backwards and heard a soft but loud crunch under my feet. And in that exact moment, the very second I heard the crunch, I felt a sudden rush of air wisp around me like a small tornado. And within seconds, that loud shrieking began to scream out into a constant siren. Frozen in fear yet again, I began to look left and, and then right and then high and then low and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a faint red glow on the tree line. I slowly turned my head, and as my gaze caught the trees, I saw a pair of big red eyes staring right at me. I wanted to look away, but I just couldn't. Whatever it was had me in some sort of trance. As the creature and I locked eyes, began to see another set of red eyes slowly fade into view behind it, and then another, and then one more. My body began to tremble in fear, and a cold shiver ran down my spine. My throat began to swell up with what I thought for sure was a scream, but when I opened my mouth, all that came out was a gust of air that had built up within my lungs. My thoughts began to race once more. Do I, do I stand and try to blend into the night? Do I raise my weapon and try to fire or do I just run and get the hell out of here? Fight or flight can be a funny thing when it becomes the only choice that matters to you. So I thought to myself, okay, Maybe raise your gun and fire. You know, the sound of the gunshots just might scare off whatever that is watching me. 
so I slowly lifted my rusty pipe pistol into the air. And as soon as my finger grazed across the trigger, all four creatures began to let out a shriek so blood-curdling that my knees gave out within an instant. And I quickly decided, okay, Brian, just run. So I jumped to my feet and ran faster than I had ever ran in my entire life. I ran back up Main Street, across the bridge, and straight out of town. The faster and further I ran, the shrieking began to grow quieter and quieter. And I realized whatever that was just wanted me out of its territory. So... I've decided I'm going to put off going back to Point Pleasant for a while. At least until I'm able to work up the courage. And now, here I am just four days after that not-so-fun night in my old hometown of Point Pleasant. It's crazy because I still feel like that creature is out there somewhere watching me. You know? Sometimes at night, I'm certain that I can see the eyes and the trees around my camp, but it's mostly just my overactive imagination getting the better of me. Anyways, that's that story, so it's getting late and I need to get some food fixed up and get ready for dinner and then bed. Brian Burton, journal entry number seven, signing out. What was that? Oh shit, not again. This is Brian Gwatney, the creator of the Omega Broadcast, a Fallout story. I just wanted to take a moment real quick and just say thank you so much for checking out this podcast. I really hope you enjoy listening to these stories just as much as I enjoy making them. If you do enjoy this podcast, please let me know by liking, sharing, and even through your comments. Thank you again so much for your support. Remember, there's a place for you at the end. Omega. Hello there, listener. It looks to me like I spotted myself a fellow collector. Now, I know I like to collect things like posters and t-shirts and action figures of all my favorite video games and TV shows. And Loot Crate makes that possible. And if you're a fan of this show, I know you love all things Fallout. And Loot Crate has a very specific Fallout type crate. And if you want to take 15% off of your order, head on over to the link in the show notes below and enter Robots Radio at checkout. That's LootCrate.com. Hey friends, this is Robots, the creator of the Robots Radio Podcast Network and host of the two original shows on the network, the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. These two shows have rocketed up the iTunes charts. They both together have over 155 star reviews in only a couple of months with bite-sized episodes that take you step-by-step through the background of the games and the game worlds. They're thought-provoking, well-produced, and a lot of fun. I recommend you go check them out at robotsradio.net or on any podcast, reader, podcatcher, whatever you use, iTunes, Spotify. Again, that's the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, available everywhere. Looking for a Fallout audio drama? It's True Vault Escapades! That's right, follow the death-defying adventures of Detective Walter Camry and his vault girl Bunny as they solve the wasteland's biggest mysteries. From the dramatic Texas prologue to the high-stakes world of New Vegas, Walter and Bunny risk it all to crack everything from murders, slaver syndicates, and corruption at the highest level in post-nuclear America. True Vault Escapades. It's a Fallout show with a detective twist. Look for True Vault Escapades wherever you get your podcasts. Are you interested in keeping up with all the latest gaming news, but you're just too busy? Well, I've got the podcast for you. The Robots Radio Show is a daily gaming news show where I bring you in a quick format all the top news about video games, nerd culture, and even the best deals. You can find the Robots Radio Show on Spotify and Apple and all the different podcatchers. And you can join me live, twitch.tv slash robots radio at around noon Eastern 
every day. Come talk about game stuff with me. Again, that's the Robots Radio Show. Available everywhere. Hey there, my name is Jameson, or Big Cat. And I am Brenna, or Mother Goose. And together, we are the hosts of the DL Weekly Gaming News. Each week, we bring you the top stories from last week, as well as something you might have missed. Our goal is to start a conversation about what's going on in the world of gaming. And every week, we have a special guest join us in the chat room, where we discuss a different gaming-related topic and learn more about our guests in the 60-second download. And if that isn't enough, we also have Slim Jims. So come and hang out with us every week and join in on the conversation. Good luck and have fun, everybody. And remember, keep your goose loose. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.